Yeah, that's what we saw. Now, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I could say, <laughs> dear <laughs> friends. Um, it is May the 28th, 2022, and we are here in the Arrhythmi Hall of the Elizabeth Freder House in The Hague. And we have just heard a fantastic expose, you might say, of one of our speakers um, who is sitting there in the audience, Patrick Steinsma. Um, an expose in a good sense of the spiritual science of anthroposophy founded by Rudolf Steiner in a PowerPoint presentation, he did this on the Anthroposophical Society, refounded by Rudolf Steiner in 1923 during the Christmas conference. And what has become of this? This is exactly the theme of this conference, uh, which is called the New Knowledge Christianity. The Christmas Foundation as the emergence to the sixth cultural period and what has happened to it. Now, this year, I don't know if you can see it. He also mentioned it, Patrick. We are now in the fifth post-Atlantic age, here in the fifth cultural age. And my insight was that the Christmas conference is a premature preparation for the true, that's Rudolf Steiner's word, true Christianity that is to take place in the next cultural phase, the so-called Slavic Russian cultural age. He said, this has to be prepared nowadays in the fifth cultural age. And that is the importance, I think, the significance of what he, what, he, what he said at the end of this Christmas conference, that it is the beginning of a turning point, a cosmic turning point. Um, also, we heard a, a lecture by Reto Sabodelli over the views of Elizabeth Freda after whom this whole house has been called. She was one of the members of the original council. And I opened the, the conference yesterday with a, a reading, a lecture on Whitsuntide and how Whitsuntide, the spirit incarnation uh, of Christ in the disciples around Maria, um, was the beginning, the birth of cosmic love and freedom, and that the Christmas Foundation was an attempt to continue this. Um, we have here this um, picture of the representative of humanity, sculptured by Rudolf Steiner, um, which was saved from the fire. Um, and this picture is of the double middle of Christ, the act of neutrality uh, between Lucifer and Ahriman. You find also here in the, this picture of Wolf of Eschenbach. Uh, the, the, the knight, the grail knight, with this diresh, this, this symbol of, uh, that he has on his shield, uh, diresh meaning two opposite divine principles of light and dark which need to be kept in balance. And we have now a situation in the world in which the powers of darkness 
are tending to overshadow the powers of the light. And what we're trying to do here is to strengthen these forces of the light, also by these 12 virtues, going back to Madame Blavatsky and Rudolf Steiner, but um, formulated by Herbert Winsemann with uh, illustrations of Jan de Kok, Dutch painter who couldn't be here. And my, my lecture is actually a presentation of this, this book, which I just managed to get finished on the last day, uh, namely the so-called memoranda that Rudolf Steiner presented to the German and Austrian governments in 1917 with a proposal, initiative coming out of Central Europe to end the war, the First World War, based on what later, he didn't do this in this in his memoranda yet, but later he called it the idea of the threefold nature of the social organism. Um, they've never been translated into English, even though they consist of the first phase of a fourfold developmental phase of this new idea of the constitutional principle of civilization. Rudolf Steiner inaugurated with these memoranda a new civilizational principle, which he later developed in three further phases, ending with the Christmas conference. Um, and that is something I'm going to try to show briefly because it's it's already I was already put it online, even though because of the hurry, somebody an American reader reminded me that the first memorandum is missing on, the, on my blog, and I'm uh, I assured him I'm going to put it on uh, uh, as soon as I get as I recuperate from this from these efforts to to organize this conference and to get this booklet fit or finished. Um, so I've called it uh, an undertitled Powers to the People. Yeah, we call it in our hippie days in the 60s, 70s, especially uh, um, yeah, the one of the Beatles, uh, not um, uh, Paul McCartney, but John, Mc John Lennon, he was calling very, very much this slogan of power to the people. Mm -hmm. It was very popular during these days. Uh, you, maybe some of you who were, who were hippies in that day knew that, that that's the, the main slogan, power to the people. Mm -hmm. But this is called powers to the people because there are actually three powers. Um, the power of the spiritual life, the power of the rights life and the power of the economic life. Those are three powers which are not in the hands of the people, but in the hands of an elite. And the idea is that these powers should be released by the government through consent, not through violence, but through insight by the people to kind of re, or to, 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 to yeah, capture what is actually their birthright, their democratic right uh, for a threefold society. And now this, this, this is the this principle of civilization, um, which up to this day has not come about. It's, we don't have a threefold society. We have a centralized state. Um, and whether it will realize in the, in the next few days or even in the next year is questionable. So I'm going to, at the end, offer an alternative, something also mentioned by Rudolf Steiner. Now, I will just, to introduce this booklet, um, turn to uh, page six, um, 
There is my tr uh, there is the forward by the translator that is yours truly, and it is called the Putin Doctrine. As a consequence of the failure of Rudolf Steiner's memoranda to be heeded. Now, uh, Putin obviously means the, the, the president of, the, of, of Russia, Putin. This publication is an update of my essay entitled Rudolf Steiner's Idea of Social Organics, a new constitutional principle of civilization, which formed the basis for a lecture given at a closed social scientific conference called after the end of the revolution, constitutional order amid the crisis of democracy that was co-organized by the New York Thales Powell Peacon Institute and the National Research University or the Higher School of Economics in Moscow, held there from September 1 and 2 in 2017. In this essay, the idea was presented that Rudolf Steiner, beginning with the two memoranda, inaugurated and developed the idea of the threefold social order, the threefold order of the social organism, in short, social organics, as a new constitutional principle of civilization in four phases, from 1917 to 1923. You know, this book of these memoranda have also been translated in Dutch. Uh, Dutch readers can, can read it. Here is this book called Het Lichtbaken van 1917, Schets van de Drieledigheid van de Mens Ontwerp voor de Driegeleding voor de Samenleving. But it is not placed in a context of the whole movement of social organics, and it is not really placed in the context of the world situation. And what with this, my, with this book, I'm trying to do is put the idea of social organics in the context of the whole movement that Rudolf Steiner inaugurated and what it could mean for the world situation. Now, one of the participants of this conference, whom I met there, was Professor Sergei Karaganov from the faculty of the higher school of economics, who served as a presidential advisor in the Kremlin, both under Boris Yeltsin and Vladimir Putin, and is still considered close to Russia's president and foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. Recently, he, this, this Professor Karag Karaganov, sent me an interview given to an Italian newspaper on April 8th, 2022 called we are at war with the west the european security order is illegitimate professor karaganov is introduced in this interview with the following words this interview was in an italian newspaper i, I in the footnote i mentioned who, who that was or where that was with the Corriera della Sera. There's also a, a, a link where you can read it. In other words, Karaganov was, was introduced with the following words. His, in other words, Karaganov's recent proposals on Russian speaking minorities in the, in the near abroad are known as the Putin doctrine. That's an important sentence. The recent proposals on the Russian-speaking minorities in the near abroad, and that means in the territory outside of present Ru Russia, the, one, the, 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 the minorities which are now living in the former Soviet USSR. His recent proposal on, on, on these minorities is known as the Putin doctrine. And Professor Karaganov who is an honorary chair of the Mos Moscow think tank, the Council for Foreign and Defense Policy, was first to come out and publicly about an all-out invasion of the Ukraine in 2019. Now, this publication, 
attempts firstly to show that Putin's declared goal to protect the suppressed Russian minorities in the states of the former USSR and to restore it to its former glory and land size can only be achieved peacefully on the basis of what Rudolf Steiner attempted to remind the world already more than 100 years ago. And this is actually something that the Anthroposophical Society, especially the Goethe Arnhem, its social section, should be, should be postulating in the world. They have, they have an incredible treasure in, 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 uh, that they're sitting on, namely the work of Rudolf Steiner, and it should be used to achieve global peace, but it's not being done. From, from, from that, from that, uh, from that uh, place. Now, and I, 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 I continue. Uh, Rudolf Steiner reminded this already 100 years ago. For the underlying, still unresolved structural causes of not only the outbreak of the tragic conflict in the Ukraine, but of all previous conflicts of this sort originate of necessity in centralized states from the suppression, ethnic cleansing, and even downright murder of their minorities clamoring for freedom. As World War I was prompted by the unresolved so-called Serbian question on the southern border of the Australian-Hungarian Empire, this is now the case, for example, with the ethnic Russians living in the eastern part of Ukraine that were deprived of their cultural and human rights. For if this border conflict is not contained and does not remain limited to the actual combatants, it could escalate and lead to World War III. Now that's the first task. Secondly, the task of this publication is to show how calamities of this sort can be prevented in the near future by the orientation and guidance of the new constitutional principle of civilization or social organics inaugurated by Rudolf Steiner in the first quarter of the previous century, which however he unfortunately was not able to develop further due to his premature death on March 30, 1925, due to poisoning. One of his greatest students who did carry his work further is the German philosopher, poet, and writer Herbert Witzemann, who served from 1963 until his death in 1988 as the head of the sections of social sciences and that of young people at the Goethe Arnhem, Free School of Spiritual Science, instituted by Rudolf Steiner as a research and development center of the, of the General Anthroposophical Society. The various texts and links to his writing in this publication may serve to support his statement, or this statement. After having read this essay, this publication, the attentive and unbiased reader should be in a position to lend credence to the thought that the fateful absence of this new principle of civilization is the greatest threat to world peace. And more specifically, that the tragic failure of the central powers to adopt the peace proposal offered by Rudolf Steiner in the form of these two memoranda to end World War I and instead to embrace the so-called 14 points by the American President Wilson with its abstract principle of national self-determination has not led only to the self-destruction of Central Europe and the destruction of Europe, this is a view by Herbert Witzemann developed, but also directly to the Putin doctrine. It is thus to be hoped for the good and even survival of humanity and the earth that at least now Europe, especially Germany, will not make the same mistake again and adopt and develop the new constitutional principle of civilization 
as the basis for a just negotiated peace settlement, not only between Russia and Ukraine, but for the sake of all places on our planet Earth where ethnic minorities continue to be suppressed and deprived of their cultural and human rights. Since the chances that this will appear in the near future are slight, an alternative in the form of the founding of Oasis of Humanity, Startups for a New Society, also suggested by Rudolf Steiner and further developed by, Rudolf, by Herbert Witzelmann, has been added at the conclusion of this publication. Now, so much for my, for my foreword, okay? Now I'm going to read to you um, the, the more or less uh, attempt to, 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 to substantiate it, what, what I said in the foreword. It's called the introduction from Trias Politica to Trias Organica. And you know what the Trias Politica is, I explained this in the, in the introduction, it's on page, page eight. Rudolf Steiner first brought the idea of the new constitutional principle of civilization or social organics to the fore in 1917 with his unsolicited an internal memorandum to the governments of the German and Austrian Hungarian emperors as a central European peace initiative to end the wars between the central powers against Russia and the West. It contained a radical yet practical proposal to finally realize the ideals of the French Revolution by extending the trias politica, and that means the separation of powers of the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of government to the trias organica. That means the three branches of the social organism. Thus, freedom in the cultural life, in science, art, and religion, equality in the right sphere of the state and politi politics, and brotherhood in the economic life. That is the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services thereby not weakening, but rather strengthening the domain of the constitutional state proper, the sphere of rights, to ensure a harmonious function between the three relatively independent powers would then be the task of a sort of Senate with a chosen representative from all three spheres. Now, apart from large section of my article Rudolf Steiner's idea of social organics that I uh, wrote for this uh, uh, reading in Moscow in 2017, these memoranda have never been translated into English. And it was translating a sentence in the first memorandum that the idea arose to give this publication the subtitle, Powers to the People, Powers to the People, <laughs> and thereby resurrect with new life and meaning, the old slogan, powers to the people, uh, old slogan, power to the people, but now in the, in the plural, instead of power, powers, uh, this slogan from my American hippie singer, songwriter in anti-Vietnam war days in the late 60s and early 70s of the previous century, before going to Dornach, Dornach, the center of the uh, Anthroposophical Society in Switzerland, to find out why we never heard anything about this in these revolutionary days, that without a guiding principle degenerated into mere drugs, sex, and rock and roll. This particular sentence from the end of the first memorandum reads as follows. It, in other words, this memorandum is conceived as the expression of what the peoples of Central Europe would do when from the part of the governments, the task would be set to recognize and release the powers of the people. In German, it is Völkerkräfte. This, in effect, means that the powers of the centralized nation state 
are through general consent to be reduced to the legislative, executive, and judicial branches of government, and that it is to release its control of an interference with the other two powers consisting of social body, namely the cultural, spiritual life on the one hand and the economic life on the other hand. It may be obvious for more than that more than 10, 100 years later, this now refers to the liberation of all people on the planet clamoring for freedom. All people living as minorities in centralized states. Think of the Basques, think of the Irish. Uh, 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 you can think of numerous people who are living in centralized states who are deprived of the minorities because of the absence of this, this new principle of civilization. And I, I mentioned already the, the present case of the, the Russian eth ethnic minority in the east of Ukraine. Now, but this first internal attempt failed, and thus Rudolf Steiner went public in 1919 with his appeal to the German people and the civilized world, which is, is, is you can find in the appendix, but it's already been translated into English, but I just, I just included it here. And in his book, The Threefold Social Order, Basic Issues of the Social Question, out of which grew a popular movement with branches in several European countries. It became a bestseller. It sold more than 40,000 copies. It was even reviewed in the New York Times in America. Because it really, it really uh, became a popular movement. It was even uh, Rudolf Steiner gave lectures to, the, to workers and in in, in industrial uh, um, firms and, and, and works. And they, 10,000 workers signed a petition that Rudolf Steiner should be elected into the government to realize a threefold social order. Of course, uh, that never happened, and Rudolf Steiner let it go. But of course, you cannot, you cannot institute social organics only through politics, because it, it, it is bigger than politics. It includes the cultural life and the economic life. And I think one of the reasons no, it's only just one that maybe Pim Fortin didn't succeed, is that he, that he started in the area of politics. But nowadays, and that is, not, that is you'll see the, 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 the further reasons, nowadays everything is run and dictated by economy. The economic sphere is all important, overriding everything. So now, and th this is why the mood of Steiner then uh, in the third phase, because the second phase of this in 1919 through his book um, that I just mentioned, uh, the threefold social order, that also failed to break through because he was opposed by all kinds of political parties and uh, due to violent opposition, he was, there was attempts put on his life. Uh, he was uh, he barely escaped in, in, in München uh, from a from a from, from far right uh, people. Uh, imagine now that Rudolf Steiner is now accused of being far right. Why well, the far right to kill him? Mm -hmm. I mean, how stupid can you get? Uh, how, how ignorant? Um, but also the anthroposophists didn't 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 support Rudolf Steiner enough in his social in his social uh, engagement. So this also failed, and um, uh, uh, from the, the left to right it failed, from the, from the forces from left to right, and too little support from anthroposophists who failed to understand that implementation of social organics would also cure the huge financial crisis, because in Germany, you, in order to go to to, to go to buy a piece of bread, you had a wheelbarrow, you had to carry all the, you had to carry millions of francs. Yeah. The inflation was incredible. Yeah. And, and the people said, they were understand, yeah, we, we, social organics, uh, three folks, fine, but first we have to cure the, the infl inflation first. And we understand that they didn't understand that to institute a threefold social order would cure the inflation. Because they were putting actually the horse behind the carriage instead of putting it before the carriage. So, uh, he, he, then he, he mentioned this in the third phase because uh, 
Rudolf Steiner developed in 1922 uh, in his course on science of world economy a new so social organic form of thinking and language. In, um, in his course on, 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 on uh, world economy. Uh, and on, now, the, this third phase is not represented by the Great Young. It was represented by Herbert Witzemann, who was the leader of the social science section. But when uh, Smith van Bump came in, this was this immediately stopped. Um, uh, Smith van Bump did, did two things, besides many other things. But he he transposed the 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 the, 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 the attention to the to the, to the triple social or back to the phase of 1919 uh, when when Rudolf Steiner during the Christmas conference said if people are still representing the threefold social order in the way that it's in my book from 1919 they're a hundred years behind the time. And people are still representing it now in, 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 the, in the council. It is one, one, of the, one of the symptoms of how the present council and the, the, the powers to be in the Great Yarnum are sidestepping the issue and doing as if, as if they're furthering the threefold social order, but doing it in an outdated fashion. And, and many people are fooled by this. The other thing that, that, that Schmidt Brabant did, he he transferred the, 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 the uh, led the attention away from his backyard in Arlesheim, which was the uh, historical site of the, of, of the, of the uh, Parsifal Grail uh, history to, uh, to, 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 uh, to St. James uh, uh, um, in, 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 in northern Spain, where the, the Venomia, uh, that, uh, well, these pilgrims go to the Santiago. Santiago of Compostela. Yeah. He wrote books about it. And he was who uh, uh, Menard Grot, you also named him in your in your in your in your uh, reading. In his second book, Werner Grot said, My greatest opponent is Smith Rabant. He he uh, stopped the, the second and third issues volumes of my book. Which are already published as forthcoming in the floor fourth issue. You see, this is it's very enlightening what he uh, what he said uh, about um, things going on behind the scenes, and he personally told me also that the uh, Grosse that was faced with a big decision: should I should he publish his book or not? On the other on one hand, Christel Lindenberg has said it's an anti grail book. Or to the effect that it, that it was that, but even in his council, one of his council members who was an American citizen, who was a director of the, um, the head of the. I can't remember his name. I have I have meant to, <laughs> planned to to, uh, to mention him, but he threatened to resign from the council if Grosser would publish his book. As Grosser had to choose between publishing his book or losing his, his council member. You see, there was a big, big, a big power struggle going behind, uh, which hardly anybody knows about it, but uh, Rudolf Steiner um, or, or Van der Groy published this and was published after his death by his son, Dr. Marcus Groy, in 2003 or 4, the second or the third issue. But, anyways, uh, Rudolf Steiner has developed a new uh, language and course for the science of the world economy because of the overall increasing power of the economy to override everything else. And of course, you cannot say, well, this is still has to be the case um, because you have to ask yourself the question is this all powerful? influence of the of the economic body become weaker or stronger since Rudolf Steiner and the obvious answer is become stronger all political programs have, have to be checked by the by this uh, 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 here in the whole of this plan the economic plan bureau or, uh, uh, and if it's not okay by the, by the economic council 
forget about it. There was no, so, so he, um, he said the threefold social order has to be first applied to the economy, where you also have a threefold uh, sense. And the same thing as in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the human, the, human the, the vertical threefold of the human being is spirit, soul, and body. But all these three components are also threefold. Huh? The body has a threefold organism and the head senses, a rhythmic system and the metabolism. The soul is divided into three forces, or, or sentient soul, uh, intellectual soul, and uh, consciousness soul, and the spirit also, into uh, uh, spirit self, life spirit, and uh, spirit man. You also mentioned it in your in your in your uh, presentation. Now, so that was the, the, but this also failed. Did it materialize? This, uh, although it's still it's still actual, but these three um, forms of the social organics are macro social. They they apply to the whole world. They're macro social. In with the in order for there to be a, a group of people to take up this new economic. Um, form of the social organics. He founded the Anthroposophical Society, made it center of uh, research and development, the Goethe Autumn in 1923, which I talked about uh, yesterday, uh, and I, I, about the more um, spiritual religious aspects, although you mentioned it too, Patrick, that that the organizational form of the anthroposophical society in the form of 15 statutes represent in, in, a, in a seminal form the organizational form that the new true Christianity of the sixth cultural age uh, needs to be, to be realized. Um, now, you see, there, so I have tried to put on these, these memoranda in the context of these four phases of the uh, 1917 memoranda, 1919, Camden, uh, Camden to the Philosophical Shadow Prospect, uh, Appeal to the Civilized World, then uh, Course of World Economy, and then the mesosocial form, namely, the, uh, this is also a, a uh, something that Rudolf uh, Herbert Witzemann developed, that these, this, 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 this organizational form um, of the anthroposophical society, and here you have on this, uh, Beto talked about this, uh, how, how also, how also um, Elizabeth Moore, is it Moore? These 15 statutes, eh? how they have, um, in terms of Phyllis Peter Fry, motives. Eh? Uh, uh, motives are um, uh, something that you, that you want to do. These, all these five or four statutes represent the direction to the outside world. What does the anthroposophical want to do? What is its motive? What does it want to do? All these here, you have all these four other statutes, which all include people. So these are the motive, these are the driving forces. In the sense of the philosophy of Freiheit, a deed is a, is a synthesis of a motive and a driving force. If you have a motive but no driving force, you, you don't do anything. You just go around the circle. If you only have a driving force and no motif, uh, then you don't know where to go. <laughs> So, uh, but in a society, these motive and driving forces have to be connected by societal eye organs, double, a double middle. Uh, you, have to, you, have to, you have to, and this is the archetype of all societies that have ideals and people that want to realize them. And so the fourth phase of this social organics is the organization 
form of the anthroposophical society. Why is it the same as the macrosocial form? Because the archetypal form of the threefoldness is a polarity harmonized or co uh, harmonized or connected by a double middle. And you have that in the, in the, in the human body. You have it in, in it's actually the compositional principle of the world, as you show. Even the hierarchies, the, the Christian hierarchies, are, are unfolded in three. And of course, you have the Trinity. But everything is, 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 is threefoldness of tr uh, Trinitarian. Um, yeah. Now, of course, so that, that was. Now, I, 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 I go on on page eight. Uh, the end of page eight. With this question, I ended the section one of my essay from 2017, because I made a, a, a short summary in this essay. However, it must be said that this fourth phase suffered the same fate as the previous ones. It was, with a few notable exceptions, not understood, neither represented, let alone realized by those that in the fourth, in the first instance were meant to do so, namely the executive council of the General Anthroposophical Society and its branches around the world, as well as the leadership of the Goethe Armen. The essay, The Gradual Loss of Social Aesthetic Qualifications in the General Anthroposophical Society by Reto Andrea Salvodelli, who just gave this lecture uh, on, uh, this, this morning and who has written a book on the, uh, you've read this book, and a trilogy on the, on the activity of Habit Witzemann and the Forstam, uh, which he showed how nine of these 450 statutes have been uh, disconnected, have been put on, uh, on non, non active, especially the middle ones. The middle ones. So if the middle ones are, are not there, these two can, 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 can play havoc because if you, if, you, if you go too far into the, uh, into the outside world and, and you get into politics and the power, power question, if you go too much into the people, then, then, then you become a kind of a sect. And so the anthroposophical has become both. It's become a sect and a powerful uh, powerhouse in which the freedom, in which these middle organs are not working. Now, so this essay by, by Reto, um, uh, and we also talked about an essay by Friedrich Sprich, the former head of the finance department at the administration of the Goethe Arnhem, uh, which he wrote a couple of weeks ago. It was published by the Nachrichtenblatt in Switzerland, and it's called Is Anthroposophy, or if better terms, can anthroposophy still be saved inside the general anthroposophical society? And from the whole doctors of the, of the essay, you, the answer you get is no, it can't. Under the present circumstances and structure, it cannot be saved. It, 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 if nothing changes the next year and during the centenary of the, of the Christmas country, it will all just be talk and no essence. And, and uh, very much uh, was enlightening what, what Patrick just uh, presented this afternoon. We're going to uh, 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 spread it around. He's, he's actually confronted the leadership of the Goethe Arnhem and all actually the whole leadership of all national societies. Because it's all actually one big club uh, uh, to, to present their reaction on his findings. So I'm going to try to, to get this to, to the right place. Next week is a general assembly of the Dutch society and we're going to try to uh, present it to the, to the council. Now, so you have this essay by, by Reto, you have this essay by Spreeth, former financial, in which he shows uh, uh, all the, the, de the despotism and the Friedrichs politique, you say in, 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 in Dutch. And the, the despotism is actually sort of Friedrichs politique, but also the, the economic powers again, 
the financial powers, uh, which, which uh, if you control those, you have practically control over everything. You can, you can block or uh, uh, just withdraw the funds and you, you can't really do anything. I mean, but we, we've done this, but without the proper um, uh, publicity, and it may be one of the reasons why I'm glad so some of you showed up, and actually should have been much more, many more people, considering the, the uh, if I may say so, the, the interest of what we're here saying. But maybe it will be a, a, a first for a, a second and a third. But these two things, but also the the the, the, the because Patrick and and his partner Michio Klinkhaber presented on Rumble um, a three hour video on uh, the nature and the workings of the deep state and the cabal and the author's energetic earth cleansing. Mm -hmm. I mentioned these three because I haven't seen your presentation yet, so I couldn't say anything about it, but now I can add a fourth one, namely uh, your, 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 uh, your presentation this afternoon. All these four uh, articles, all from different angles, but all primarily based on anthroposophy as science of the grail, shed further light on what must be regarded as a policy, even sometimes with the best of the intentions, of prevention, suppression, and infiltration by forces aiming to destroy the anthroposophical society and the Christian community, the movement for religious renewal, something that Rudolf Steiner warned about in his lectures for the first class of the School for Spiritual Science in 1924. He said, the opposing forces are trying to destroy completely with stumpf und stil out to, to destroy the two most dangerous movements in the world today, the anthropological society and the movement for the religious uh, uh, renewal. And I put a note in here, some 30 years later, the American President Eisenhower, on the occasion of leaving his office, warned of the danger of what he called the military-industrial complex as a state within a state, of which also President Kennedy warned before he became, in all likelihood, himself a fatal victim of the deep state. Also, former President Trump mentioned it often, for which he was often ridiculed as a conspiracy theorist by the Main Street media, as is anyone who comes out into the open with this accusation. Probably also this will be said of us, me and you, Patrick. It's already been said because your, your, your piece on, 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 on uh, a three hour video I've put on, on the anthropological sites, in which some people said this is the top of conspiracy theater and a great thing for fact checkers to, to, <laughs> to correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, the fact checkers need to be fact checked. Yeah. And they're all cabal. Now, <clears throat> now, this publication ends with a textual contribution by Herbert Witzum to the advice by Rudolf Steiner given to young people during his course on biodynamic farming in 1940-24, namely to start Oasis of Humanity, which was taken up in 1950. 45 by Albert Steffen, the Swiss poet and author who, after Rudolf Steiner's death in 1925, became his successor as president of the General Anthroposophical Society, and by Herbert Witzemann, who has made frequent references in his work to this ideal, stating that the founding of such oases could offer a perspective on a world peace union. I, um, now, and this, of course, has not happened either. Well, uh, Rato mentioned this in this, in this article of, 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 of Spreek. He said there was a German millionaire who wanted to, at the end of his life, contribute something, a great, great amount of 40 million euro or, or, or mark or whatever. And he offered it to the Gertian the jail, via the JLS bank as an anthroposophical so-called bank. On the, but they said, we'll, we'll relay that fund to the Gertianum on, on the basis, on the condition that we can 
decide who is the who become the uh, treasurer. And uh, Sprich, who was the head of the financial department, I said, I never saw any, any of this get, I never saw any of this money. But imagine what this money could have been done if you, if with this money you could have, you could have started a model oasis of humanity. So this is what would have happened with someone said, we must first start a model oasis of humanity based on the, on the findings of, of Rudolf Steiner and his own findings, and then it could be followed by, 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 by other ones, and then they, they could be connected, interconnected with the whole world, and this would offer a perspective on, on world, a world peace, what he called a world peace union. It's a, it's a, a term he used, a world peace union, uh, oasis of humanity, a world peace union of oasis of humanity. Now, the, the appendices, because there's about almost seven appendices in this book, include an annotated version of the founding statutes, later called principles, of what was designed to be a worldwide union of people. Because the first statute here, the most important one, says that the anthroposophical society is to be a union of people. It's, it's translated as a... As a, as a association of people. Now, uh, Rudolf Steiner said, um, for Einigem von Menschen, a union of people, a people's union. Anthroposophical society is a people's union, which is, you know, doesn't exist. We don't have a people's union. We have the people here of uh, China, People's Republic, uh, but a general people's union, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, a union of individual people doesn't exist uh, apart from the philosophical society, which has been completely um, uh, <coughs> depressed, suppressed, and, and sidetracked. And the great, great, great challenge is how can we, between now and 19, next year, interfere in this in a good way and present plans and realize to recalibrate, renew. I know you use three terms, uh, recalibrate, renew, resurrect, re re redirect, and resurrect. Resurrect, yeah, the anthroposophical society. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a small contribution to that, to the history of that and how, it, how it's still rel relative for the future. So these, these principles were uh, designed as, uh, as a, for the organization form of people's union. Um, and, um, and there are other, and other documents and images, such as the wooden sculpture of the representative of humanity, which is on the back page of, of, the, of this booklet, uh, by Rudolf Steiner, which are to substantiate what this publication is offering for critical appraisal, namely a hitherto practically unknown overview of a unified theory of the macro a meso-social form of social, macro-social form of social organics as a new constitutional principle of civilization for the structural liberation of mankind, a charter of humanity. And that is also one of the, um, one of the social aesthetic studies by Herbert Witzemann, which is called the, the in, 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 in English I translated it as the charter of humanity, the principles the anthroposophical society as the basis of life and path of training. A charter of humanity. That we have a charter of humanity and, and, and we have a union of people, but only on paper, more or less, all on paper. Now, the lack of knowledge and implementation of these four objective dynamic laws of mankind, which I'm going to uh, present in the next uh, we have still some time, yeah. The, 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 the lack of knowledge and implementation of, these, of this civilization principle, I repeat what was said in the foreword, the, the, abs the sore absence is the greatest threat to world peace. This will now be developed in more detail with reference to sources and literature for further study. Imminent criticism is as always more than welcome. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
read the last chapter of this book and I will leave the reading of the memorandum to the, to the reader because you can read them also on, uh, on the internet. Um, um, and you can also order the booklet from, from me in the, from the Wilhelm Institute uh, for Anthroposophy, uh, Social Organics uh, and Grail Research. So, but one, one thing that I, that I must not mention it to you, Patrick, you had to kind of laugh. I laugh in a, I not laugh, but you, you were struck by it. Rudolf Steiner called the First World War a false flag operation. You know, a false flag operation is, is also used for, for uh, uh, came, came from maritime when ships hoisted a, a flag which, which didn't uh, present their true intentions is to, is to uh, misinform your, your, your opponent so they didn't know who they were dealing with uh, and, and he said it's a, it's a false flag operation because President Wilson who came up with these 14 points said they were, they were fighting for freedom and rights of people the freedom and rights and they were there to liberate nations but Rudolf Steiner said, completely untrue. And it, it, the, what they're fighting for is Anglo-American hegemony. They're guilty of Anglo-American racism even. And there is no, absolutely no reason to think that this has stopped since then. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's become even worse. Uh, and it's become an incredibly dangerous situation. You've mentioned some of these. These, these false flag operations. Even the, the COVID-19 is a false flag operation. And the Great Army doesn't, 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 doesn't acknowledge that, instead furthers it to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. So let me just finish this presentation then with this last page and a half to show that the social organics was the first was not only developed in four phases, but it was the fourth of four dynamic laws which Rudolf Steiner formulated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this chapter is called on page 10, Social Organics in the Historical Context of Rudolf Steiner's Social Impulse. Rudolf Steiner's idea of the threefold order of the social organism, the threefold commonwealth, or tree formation of the social organism, as it has also been called, was preceded by three other basic constitutional elements of human society. The first one he formulated in 1898 as the fundamental sociological law. And it, 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 it reads, during the earliest stages of civilization, humanity strove towards the development of social groupings, collectives. The interests of the individual were sacrificed to the interests of the group. Subsequent development led to the liberation of the individual from the interests of the group and the free unfolding of the needs and forces of the individual. In other words, if you want a criterion for deciding if a nation or a group is is, is progressive, you can ask yourself, is the freedom of the individual furthered? Now, if you look at one, one nation when it's obviously not the case, it's China. The, the collective is there the greatest ideal and the, and, the, and the individual plays a very, very minor, uh, minor role in this. And, and, and this is my commentary. During the course of human evolution, the relationship between the individual and the collective was turned upside down. Instead of sacrificing oneself to the interests of the clan, the tribe, the nation, etc., now it has become a matter of liberating oneself from these bonds. This universally applicable rule leads to the right of individuality and as and as such can serve as a criterion for determining whether a nation state or union of states is either furthering or holding back 
the just course of human civilization. Okay, in Europe, we see more and more, okay, in, 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 in Holland, more and more dictatorial uh, developments. Under the Mondial, we have to protect the health of the, of the citizen. Yeah. Now, the second constitutional principle uh, that Rudolf Steiner formulated in an essay in 1906 is the fundamental social law and reads as follows. The well-being of a community of people working together will be the greater the less the individual claims for himself the proceeds of his work, i.e., the more of these proceeds he makes over to his fellow workers, the more his own needs are satisfied, not out of his own work, but out of the work done by others. His, the, the commentary of Rudolf Steiner was as follows. Every arrangement in a community that is contrary to this law will inevitably engender somewhere after a while distress and want. It is a fundamental law which holds good for all social life with the same absoluteness and necessity as any law of nature within a particular field of natural causation. It must not be supposed, however, that it is sufficient to acknowledge this law as one for general moral conduct or to try to interpret it into the sentiment that everyone should work in the service of his fellow men. No, this law only lives in reality as it should within a community of people succeed in creating arrangements such as that no one can ever claim the fruits of his own labor for himself, but that these go wholly to the benefit of the community and he must himself be supported in return by the labors of his fellow men. The important point is therefore that working for one's fellow men and obtaining an income must be kept apart as two separate things. Now this dynamic, this is my, my, my uh, commentary, this dynamic reciprocal law has been relay, realized to a great extent as a worldwide division of labor where in contradiction to the Middle Ages, practically no one except the farmers works for himself anymore. It postulates, in short, the more altruism, the more well-being, the more selfishness, the more suffering, need and ultimately war. It is the exact counterpoint to the liberal or neoliberal creed based on the false assumption that unbridled egoism leads to society societal well-being. Now, the final constitution, the third constitutional element of human society, Rudolf Steiner called in his lecture, Social and Anti-Social Forces in the Human Being in 1918, he called it the archetypal social phenomenon. And this, he formulates as follows, if one human being faces another, then one person is always trying to put the other one to sleep and the other one is constantly trying to stay awake. <laughs> it is kind of almost comical what he says here because you, you, you realize it actually intuitively, this is true. Huh? Yes, yet, yet to speak in Goethe says this is the archetypal social phenomena of social science. Now, that is also why I claim that these Virtues are a tremendous exposition of this, of this uh, uh, archetypal social phenomena because Witzemann shows in his, in his, in his uh, prelude that these virtues can originate in human interest, human, human, human uh, meetings in such a way that that, the, that your thinking is adopted by the other and in the other lives your thinking and, and then you change roles, the other one starts to speak and you adopt his thinking in you. So the other one lives in you and you live in the other one so that you can ultimately say, I am who you are and you are who I am. This is a, an extension of I am the I am. Huh? Now, it is, 
I am who you are. <laughs> it's not I am the I am, uh, but uh, the other one is you are who I am. Now, uh, try to read this, this, uh, this, what you see in this. Uh, uh, we, uh, there's also an, an, an English tradition of the, the virtues, which, uh, which I also has put uh, is online. Uh, it's not the, 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 it's not called a subtitle uh, the, uh, uh, the forces the powers of the uh, free uh, of of uh, uh, free uh, new Christianity. It's called powers of the human uh, powers of the human soul. Uh, the English tradition. Now, on the basis of these of this archetypal social phenomena. Uh, this uh, architectural social phenomena. The groundwork for a new science and art of communication has been laid by anthroposophical researchers in the field of human dialogue and discourse that can lead to a veritable spiritual union, an exchange of being between the participants involved in which one then can experience and relate to the other. I am who you are and the other one referring you are who I am. Now, Final and fourth element in this domain is the idea of threefold social, the social organism, which is here abbreviated with the term social organics. This term was never actually used by Rudolf Steiner, but was coined by Herbert Witzemann, the former leader of the social science section of the Goetheanum, a school for spiritual science in Dornach, originally founded by Rudolf Steiner as the research and development center of the Anthroposophical Society to denote the macro as well as the meso social form threefold social organics. This unifying theory of social organics will now be further elaborated. Now, and then comes this a chapter called The Egg of Columbus, the inaugural phase of the macro social form of social organics in 1917. And I describe how this these memoranda originated. They originated for the, for the to buy, it was a question by a German, Karl Blechenfeld, who asked Rudolf Steiner, can you please do something and help us to get out of this, 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 uh, this, 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 uh, this mess? And then he, you know, Rudolf Steiner worked with him and he finally came up with what later was to be called um, uh, the threefold social order. Uh, one, one thing maybe I, I mention in this before I leave, um, and this is what I said in the beginning to the to forward, that the Putin doctrine is a consequence of Middle Europe or not heeding the, these memoranda by Rudolf Steiner. And here's an instance of what happened. Uh, um, uh, let me just read this. Eh? This is Count Lerchenfeld found these first memorandum to be the egg of Columbus. He called it the egg of Columbus. And you know what the egg of Columbus is, right? Yeah. Uh, and did everything to, he could to get it in the hands of the German diplomats. It did indeed reach the office of the German Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, Richard von Kuhlmann who became the political head of the German delegation to the peace negotiations with the defeated Russia in Brest-Litovsk on the Polish border with the Ukraine in 1918. I'm reading on page 12. Mm -hmm. However, he failed to stand up against the harsh demands of the German Supreme Military Command under General Ludendorff, and instead of putting the memoranda on the negotiating table, as the peace program for the central powers, as a counter proposal to the parodies of national self determination programmed by the President Wilson, that became later, he backed, uh, and backed also by the Bolshevik, Bolshevik Lenin, he left the memoranda in his diplomatic attache case. Because he didn't put them on the negotiating table with the Russians. He, he failed to do that. Because the, the military command made made it impossible. Had he put them on the bargain table and had they been accepted, which is not altogether unlikely, the course of world events would, according to Rudolf Steiner, have taken a very different turn. And this is a, 
as this is a sentence from what he said, the whole of Eastern Europe would have understood this. Everybody knows this who is aware of the forces in Eastern Europe, namely to let Tsarism, and Putin is a certain Tsar, eh? you can compare to a Tsar, to let Tsarism be replaced by the threefold social order, then would have happened what actually should have happened. Instead, von Krumann helped Lenin and his cohort financially come to power and against the intentions of the Russian folk seal. Rudolf Steiner says this, the Russian people had to suffer the communist yoke of Marxist-Leninism for some 70 years. So, you see what kind of world historical forces are playing here. Huh? Um, now, then you have the first memorandum that is addressed to the German government. Uh, I will just say a few words about it. He, he talks what should have been, what should have happened, centralized state should be uh, uh, divided into these three elements, but there are also opposing forces. He talked about the secret societies behind the Freemasonry in England, who already had a map of Europe and this map I've published on page, on page uh, 44, in which this was even before <clears throat> 19th century, the, the future division of Europe was already painted in, in this map. And this is one of the reasons why uh, also the English were actually the, the, the cause for the First World War. And there was an uh, uh, a Swiss historian uh, who came up with this uh, idea that Rudolf Steiner reviewed his, his essay uh, is in the appendices. Um, so these secret societies uh, Rudolf Steiner mentioned and it has been found to be true by countless researchers. I, na I, I named some of them in the second memorandum um, I've already mentioned the two American presidents. Uh, yeah, there's also a book by Chris Mulligan called Fleshing Out Skull and Bones, Investigations into America's Most Powerful Secret Establishment, Skull and Bones. So these secret societies behind the Freemasons um, uh, uh, instigated by uh, Western American Ang Anglo occultists. Uh, it is absolutely naive that this has stopped since then. So, uh, this booklet is also there to repudiate those who say, yeah, yeah, this is conspiracy theater. theater. You're, 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 um, uh, you have no reasons for saying that uh, there is a deep state. Uh, please read this book. Um, I'll, put it, I'll put it on my, my internet site. Read the, the um, appendices. Um, and you will probably, if you still hold this, will have to really rethink your ac accusation. Um, now, perhaps uh, with, with those words, I will uh, end this uh, this uh, presentation. It's supposed to end at nine nine thirty. We may have uh, maybe fifteen minutes to uh, to uh, discuss this if you want. But uh, we can uh, stop the film uh, here if you want. Thanks for your interest. <laughs>